Welcome back to RC Pilots Lounge. We are here tonight for episode four with everybody's favorite, Timber Brothers. We're going to talk about all kinds of things, uh, where Timber Brothers uh, name came from, which that'll be fun. I, I'm 100% responsible for that, by the way. But this is Joe and Bradley. It's Reem, right? Yeah. Did I say it right? Okay, that's what I've been saying. You guys, uh, what I like to find out kind of right away, too, it's like, what's your favorite place to send people to check you guys out? Like your RC exploits. Like, what's the best place for you guys? Facebook? Probably right next to us. Yeah, Facebook, man. We like Tired Iron, and uh, we like Motion RC. You spend a lot of time on those on we those pages. We just, you know, if people come out and they want to watch us, fair enough. We, we just like flying planes. Cool. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so when you're not physically doing it right there on site, like what's your favorite place to send folks to you? Like folks are going to see this and want to, hey, man, where are those guys at? They want to check you out. So what, Joe the Pilot, right, well, on Facebook? I before, I'm not on the forums very much, uh, but I'm Joe the Pilot, uh, and then uh, you just got a new handle. Yeah, I, uh, after Nephi, I made a made an account. Uh, real fan of uh, William Defoe in uh, Flight of the Intruder, so I'm Cole Virgil Cole. <laughs> nice. Check that out. Yeah, check awesome. That out. Make sure you comment in the that replay or something on this so people can see you. And you guys are, are really, I mean, for a minute there, when I looked in the hangar, I thought you guys were at George's place. You got more going on than we can all see. But, man, you've got uh, Motion RC represented quite well with the Spitfire, the B-24, um, three F-86, a couple Tiger Cats, and the F-4 that looks uh, like it's – Has have you flown the F-4 yet? Not yet. Not yet. That was the – my dad purchase and we're going to make that next week stock yeah stock 6l we're just getting into it which is awesome that jet is fantastic um we got, uh, we got the afterburner in the cart rc uh rc uh jet geek? Dude. rc geek rc geek awesome and burner the burner's going on this week fantastic um let's see what else goodness sakes it, it's a, a week goes by so fast and the hour will fly so you guys are kind of doing a tired iron initiative a little bit too, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, you guys, like I said, you kind of look like you were at George's place in a way. Um, are you, you got a field there close to you? Place, uh, Start over, Joe, because you cut out. We, we were like a, a kind of a George ourselves until we met him, and it's like, hey, the other people out there are as crazy as us. Yeah, you know yeah, saying? yeah. Uh, so we got that going on and we got a lot of toys and, but we want to, we want to, we like what George is doing with the tired iron brand and we want to be a part of it. We want to, we want to spread the message. We want to, we want to get the young folk involved. That's awesome. However we can, we were talking to George earlier. We had a pretty good meeting and just talking about, you know, he's down South. We're up North. You know, if we were to start a North chapter, we're in Ohio and we can start Ohio chapter and, and get going what we need to get go, you know, fly motion brand and, and uh, spread the tired iron message that's awesome which is community camaraderie you got time for everybody it doesn't matter where you're at in the hobby this is like these peeps have your back like yeah. that's the best part isn't it yep absolutely like you said before regardless of what you're flying i mean if you're flying a paper airplane or you're flying a 600 700 electric jet you know, Bring it out, have fun. That's the best part about the whole hobby is if you're making it out of stuff you got laying around, bring it, just get out. Exactly, and there's no, there's no ego, check it at the door. That, and that's, that's one of the greatest things about, that's why things work. Um, you know, I always, of course I have our own little journey as a reference, but Mike and I, when we first started the YouTube channel before we started doing stuff for motion we did regular flight reviews and stuff but we also did like lessons with the champ it's it's kind of the same vibe right i mean it's it's just i kind of feel like i there's not a whole lot of uh folks around us but that's kind of where we got the idea in the first place to bring it to the internet because there were a couple kids that we you know kind of got up to speed but a, as an example about flying everything like i just flew the main flight on the e-flight p47 
I was at the field with three dudes. One dude's flying a monster pattern plane with counter rotating props, like a 10S system. Another dude's flying some big monster ugly stick gasser thing. And I'm flying, you know, the E Flight P 47 electric. And so there's no, everybody's cool hanging out, watching each other rip it. I, I love it. Earlier in today, because because what I do, I'm a, I'm a flight instructor by trade, and I love it. I love teaching people how to fly. But what I was thinking about too, you were talking to George, is if you're in this hobby and other people come out to the flying field, if you float an airplane for you know a successful flight, you in turn have just become a flight instructor for somebody that has a lot of time than you. And there's no reason. Uh, why you know if you if you've mastered one airplane that you can't you can't help somebody out and, and be part of you know just trying to keep them hold it straight and level and bring it back to earth in one piece you know everybody should be doing that yeah that's right it, there's so many different ways I, I talked to some guys who I mean and I started this way too where everybody gives you the good advice to go hang out with uh, and mentor with somebody who knows what they're doing which is great advice but not everybody does that it's like some weird performance anxiety or something so i never flew with other dudes until i already kind of knew what i was doing but that wasn't the i mean that was for me the way to go but some guys jump right in with somebody and that's awesome yeah what's that joe you just got to realize that, that even if somebody's out there flying good they've crashed five of them before they figured it out oh you know? easy yeah yeah, yeah. I, well, I just told a guy, a guy just messaged me, uh, GB Linden. People may recognize that name. He's been doing stuff forever on social and reviews a lot of stuff in films. Uh, he, he's always putting stuff up on YouTube. Uh, he's been around for a while. I like the guy, but he just DM'd me and told me he bought the uh, BAE Hawk, which is a little bit why. That's the first model? Oh, hell no. <laughs> no, the dude's been, you can't see this because of the light, but it says BAE and I call it the Bayhawk and everybody like picks on me. But, but talking about crashes. So he just got the BAE Hawk. The dude's got experience for sure. Um, but I, I, that may be one of his first couple of jets, but um, I told him, yeah, I got to get another one. Another what? one. Cause I crashed the, the GBs out of mine. <laughs> I get turned up on the, I got turned around on the knife edge deal. Like I, I usually like coming from one way and like, I just know crank it right rudder. And, and it, like, I, I think I pushed it. I like to nose push it around and then I get turned around and um, wrong, wrong rudder into the corn. What's Good that? times. The, the Talon. Uh, what's that? What's that white EDF? The Talon. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Who's making it? A free wing. It's, uh, it's the white one. It's got the spoiler on. It's Navy scheme. You know what I'm talking about? You ever the, T the T-45? Uh, yeah, the Gross Hawk. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. T that thing's awesome. Yeah. That 90 millimeter? Yeah, we did it a while back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an older model, but that thing looks sweet. It's dynamite, dude. Slaps, yeah. speed brake. Yeah. 90 millimeter six cell power Still on stock i i wouldn't know probably okay right on yeah yeah so let's see so let's talk about where the timber brothers came from because i i remember it very distinctly it was nephi not um last this exactly the the one before last because i i couldn't make it to this last one which stinks but um you had timbers there and this yeah. last year was awesome because you were doing the same thing with like f-86s and tiger cats instead um but so so the timber brothers you guys were flying the best formation i've ever seen and it was kind of windy that year and so you guys were just it was like kites i mean the, yeah, temp, the yeah. yeah it was like 30 mile an hour winds or whatever it was and we're you guys were standing oh. still yeah, nobody's up and we're bored. So. What do we got? We got yeah. timber. <laughs> well, I re Boots Whirly Gig is his name on the Hobby Squawk forums. Wanted me to maiden his 4S F16. Yeah, we, yeah, the, the camo one. Uh, the gray one. I had yeah. the camo one there, but he had the 4S one, wanted a maiden. Yeah, I, 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 I
so we got him set up and actually i kind of sent him pack and i was like dude set this up by the book dude before you hand it to me to maiden it like all crazy like just set it up by the book please and then um we'll do it and um he he came ready with it and you two were up you know and in the timber especially with winds like that you can kite fly him i mean it's so cool man and and uh so I was like, uh, yeah, hold on a minute. Uh, you got to wait for the Timber Brothers to get down or whatever like that, you know. And it's 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 been that ever since. What was that, Joe? Well, because you were just like, well, you guys need a minute to come down? I was like, we're going to be in the same spot. So just do your thing, you <laughs> yeah. know, right? I think I did, too, because I was like, well, cool, man. I got three minutes. That's what she said. And then I'll be done. <laughs> What's that? We got 15. You got 15. I, I every now and then I don't know why I do this, but like I will fly like the old days when I was learning, like the battery out. I don't know why I do it. Like I did it, it, it like the flight times I get sometimes are so crazy. I shouldn't ever repeat them because someone will try it and it's bad. It's it's bad. Like I, I brought I brought one down today at like two point seven or something like lucky to get it back stupid like double digit flight time on a warbird like i should have never done it um so that reminds me um dennis farley wanted me to talk about the e-flight p47 maiden a little bit but i want to talk about the e-flight cherokee first because you said you're going to get one joe absolutely it's in the cart it's in the cart yeah so let, let's get to uh, let me answer for dennis uh, real quick before I forget completely. The E-Flight P47, 1200 millimeter wingspan, 48 inch for those who like imperial measurements. It's a three cell power plane and comparable in size to some of the flight line offerings that I know love the 4000 4S battery jam it up in the front, right? So it's an E-Flight plane. It's, it's the same size as some of those flight line birds. But you know it's a it, there it's a three cell deal. So I don't remember what the manual says, but I have a feeling it's somewhere between twenty two hundred and thirty two hundred three S. You look at a plane that size, you're like, there's no way the twenty two hundred's enough weight wise up in the front. So maiden flight thirty seven hundred three S, second flight three thousand three S. I'm sorry, thirty three hundred all admiral packs. And then I was like, all right, that's cool. Um, 4S. Let's go 4S. Um, the the Cherokee says it can go 4S right out of the box, but the E-Flight P47 doesn't, but people get along doing it. And I was like, I have more 4S packs than 3S packs. Let's do this. The E-Flight P47 on 4S is absolute awesome. So the maiden went really well, Dennis. <laughs> I have an awesome story about 3S versus 4S. Let's and have it. Timber. Yeah. So okay. He's got a timber too, and he's the one that got us into it. Is our dad? We can't take any credit without him. Heck, he fronts for half the time, half the time. But, but anyway, he's got this timber, and we're flying, and we're doing our thing. And he's like, "I want to fly," and I was like, "Okay." All the three S packs are whooped, and I was just kind of like, "All right, let's throw a four S at it at the timber." And then they don't call for it, but I was like, "I'm pretty sure it can do it." Yeah. And so flying, everything's going great. It's just wild with power. And I'm just like, why don't you just fly it like half power, you know, my, you know, just don't hurt it. Next thing I know, the airplane's falling out of the sky. I mean, craziness. And he's just like, he's trying to, he's trying to fight it and fight it. And I was just like, I was like, man, that thing's going down. We get to the wreckage site and the uh, motor, the prop and everything had just ripped right out of the mounts. <laughs> could take the forest with the, the foam and the glue and the mounts couldn't do it. And it ripped it right out. So. 4S and Timbers don't do it. <laughs> I get it. That's crazy. Well, and I think partly why that Cherokee can do it is, man, when you get one and you see how that front end's put together and the way they uh, – the, the carbon – anybody who has one knows exactly what I'm talking about. There's two rods of carbon that run on either side of the fuselage, like way back and to the front. So the servo tray for the, you know, rudder and elevator are on those. Um, and then up at the front, those carbon fiber rods tie into the firewall. And it's, it's one of those kind of backward mounted motor setups. So like 
I had to change the motor on mine. That's how I know. So the cow comes off four little screws and then um, the, the mount for the motor, which is behind it then, uh, you, you pull that whole thing out. Because if you go out through the battery hatch, you're gonna get in the way of uh, all the landing gear business for the nose gear, which is dope. Because the compression is like the biggest stroke I've ever seen on a foamy. Nice. You're going to love it, bro. You're going to hey, love it. The one thing that I was looking at is that it's got the compression on the nose nose wheel. Is there any way you could modify that and put oleo on the mains as well? Just buy two extra nose struts? You know, it's modeling. So I, I kind of always think anything is possible if you want to go hard enough. George will do it. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's kind of old school fixed gear where it's going to have like a, a 90 degree, right? And then another little stub up and sit in like a notch and screw down in. So it'd be some doing. My, my favorite thing, if I'm going to modify landing gear and don't want to work super hard at it, is to just go for like the Dave Brown tires or something. Super soft. Because there's nothing worse than greasing one in. And then it sounds like a shopping cart with a bad wheel or something, or like a plastic toy, like skidding across. It's like, man, I just greased it in. This should sound cool. Like talk about sound systems. They, they need to have one that's like pressure sensitive with the tires and does a little, little bark. Yeah. Every time, every yeah. time. Oh man. I, I always so excited to do this show. And I, I was worried for a minute because it, I couldn't get an answer from you for a while. Not that it was last minute, but I was like, oh, man, I think it was yesterday I finally got confirmation yeah, is going to be the Timber Bros. Yeah, right on. So talking about other folks flying and spreading the love and the community of it, um, your boy's name is Jonah, right, Brad? He's yeah. over – is he flying? Yeah. 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 Cool, man. Did you? Hey, what's up, dude? Hello. Did, you went to Nephi. I missed you. You're getting big. What are you now, like 12? Uh, 13. Uh, I knew I was going to be wrong. I was hoping to overestimate because kids always feel cool when you overestimate. Dude, is that your Uh Yeah, I built this and painted it. Nice. You've been flying it? Uh, yeah, I flew it uh, three times out the flying field near us. Uh, Twice with the wings that are on it, you can actually change them out. And I flew with another set of wings on our other one. Cool, man. So, so you sw swap the wings out on that one right there, and cha and so what are the what's the difference between the wing sets then? Uh, well, Kinda. This, yeah. See the wings on this one. Oh, wow. Have, uh, yeah. Yeah. I can see. I don't know what to call it, but I can swap see it. And then, uh, like, uh, they call them swappables. Yeah, oh, that's sweet. So if you take off the rubber bands on these, and then you can just bolt that right up to the. Nice. Yeah, we we took a trip out to flight test this summer, and and we did, we flew. Uh, he's got a, a styrofoam airplane that we built four years ago, I think. And uh, we took that out with us, and that was the only thing that we were willing to fly. Because if you've it's ever crazy. seen flight tests, they, they get these big hairballs going on with like <laughs> two planes in them. And yeah. We took timber, and we took uh, a couple other bigger planes, but we were like, nah, that, we're not putting our stuff up into that. But it was pretty cool to see how they built everything. And they had all these tents just full of guys just building these things. and. So we bought a couple of kits and brought them back with us. And uh, I had a week off of work a couple weeks ago. Up, so we buddy. stayed at home and built these things and painted them and whatnot. And just hold it up. Bro. I think it was it was a great week just, just for the two of us to hang out and build together. Yep. That's the best. That is absolutely where it's at. That's cool. How, how far away is the field for you guys? Probably about half yeah. hour. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. In in Janeiro, Finley's, yeah, half hour, something like that. And it's all back roads. And so. We we can't all have a, a strip in our backyard, can we? Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh man, I wish I, I'd go 20 minutes to fly too. And I almost went to a school today, you know, because I mean, like with the jets and some of the bigger warbirds, you, you really should be at a, fl a proper flying field, you know, right. but there's some stuff. That's what's great about having a bunch of different things is like, there's some stuff. It's like, man, I don't have time to go 30 minutes or 20. Um, mm -hmm. Let me go to the school over here and kick, kick one out. And, um, that doesn't need a bunch of room. I mean, that's why I love having like, I mean, I love the, the six cell planes, but I also just, I mean, I'm completely wild over uh, that Cherokee right now. And yeah. that P 47, just because man, I can pretty much do them anywhere and, and stuff like you're making Jonah and, and even some of the micros and like the, um, I'm not really a 3d guy, but it is kind of fun to play around with those tech one things. They're like nerf. That EPP, I mean, they're ugly as sin, but they're, they definitely serve a, a purpose, right? I mean, you can fly them into the barn if you want to. So, mm -hmm. so cool, Jonah. Good to see you again, man. Um, yeah, definitely keep doing what you're doing because uh, you, you keep it up. They're going to let you fly these jets. Yeah. Well, we already said we're, we're building up towards heritage flights. Oh, cool. <laughs> nice. We need we need three or four on the wing. Yeah. We'll get yeah. get them get them all learned up on camera work too. I told my boy he just turned seven. I was like, you know what your first job's gonna be, don't you? <laughs> I was like, the yard work's free. You just owe me that because I feed you. But I, I'll I'll pay you to run the camera for me when you get bigger, a little bit because it's hard to come. It's hard to get Mike out sometimes. Um, yeah, Thursdays don't work for him, but Thursdays work good for George. And right now, this is how we're doing it. You know, it's good enough for primetime television. I figure it's good enough for us. Let's see some more of your hangar, Joe. Uh-oh. Oh, cool. Take us on the tour. Just a quick tour. Do it, man. So we got all the toys out. Oh, man. Looks fantastic. You know what I saw? That was your doing. You and Mike. We, I seen that at uh, Neffy two years ago, and I had to have one. Oh, yeah. That was the year we did the expose on um, Steve Hodges, dude, his his yeah. uh, decked yeah. out one. F4, Tiger Cats. Those Tiger Cats are amazing. F86s. Man. B24. So what in there hasn't been up in the air yet? This one, this one, and this one. Those are all my dads. <laughs> okay. We got a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You know, it's it's miniature. You know, George has got us. He, he got us figured out. Yeah. Over here. Well, man, you still got critical mass. That's awesome. <laughs> Voodoo. Man, those yeah. are fun. Most definitely. All right, Brad, put it back down. Yingling. <laughs> Chilling. Yep. I don't mind that. Oh, man. Um, you're, the Spitfire is awesome. You know what I ended up doing? I can't remember what the book says about up mix or down mix, but I, I ended up putting either took out the up mix or put in a little down, one of the two, because it flies well, 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 so we good. Were, we were trying to fly on grass, and the tail just kept trying to come up. And I don't know if we need some I, – I couldn't taxi it even on finely grown have, – have you, have you flown a spit on grass? Yes. Uh and then you got no problem with the tail sitting? You know, definitely high rate elevator, dude. Yeah. Well, high rate elevator and pin that something down. High rate elevator full up, and I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get it off. I had to hand launch the sucker. But uh, we're gonna get it, we're gonna get it ringed out next week. It's gonna be it's, good. It's awesome. And and for me, most of the time they don't nothing needs much of a setup. It's sure. it's how's it act. Uh, on approach is my whole thing. I'd love landings and touch and goes, and I like them to feel the way I know how I want them to feel. So I remember flying early. If you watch the, some the first videos on that Spitfire, we did everything's gravy. And then on approach, it's like, man, it, lo it looks like a dude's fighting a floater. Yeah. Nose is up. It's wallowing around a little bit. And a lot of times I'm getting the work done before I've had a ton of time on this stuff, you know, and because uh, we all got regular jobs, we're getting it in when we can, right? So, so, so after that, 
I, I start, I either took out the up mix or put in a little down something, but I got it to settle in just the way I want it to. Cause one of my favorite warbirds on approach is the, uh, the P40, that, that FMS P40, the B model. It settles in so good if you do it right. If you, if you go with a shallow approach, you're going to be ugly. But if you let that thing maintain its own speed and just settle in, follow its nose, set it up right, it didn't call for any mix. It just gave you the perfect descent, you know, not too steep, not too shallow. You see us do it at Muncie when we bring them. And then right there at the end, you can, you can hold her level in the flare. It'll touch on two and then either go around or let the tail fly and then pin it. I love the Spitfire and the P40 for that because both of those will let you do a three pointer or a wheel landing. If you want, I think Mustangs, like a two-wheeler forget it but you're gonna love the spitfire dude i love that spitfire i'll never get rid of it well i had i had two thoughts uh, first one you're talking about p40s i gotta give a shout out to uh warbird charlie that guy's our buddy out at Nashville. yes he was charlie flying, brown yeah he was flying those p40s this year man and just greasing them on and we love seeing warbird charlie out there he's our buddy yes cool. listening to him laugh after a good landing <laughs> Man, I, I'm telling you, it's all about the people. I mean, the <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I had a sweet story about uh, Spitfires. So this goes way back when to like the infancy of when we started flying. And the funny thing is, we still got them in the hangar. It's uh, Park Zone. This was probably before you got into things because it was we... the Depron deal. The Depron deal with the brush gearbox. Yeah, man. Nice. Yes. Enough. The and the garage door remote. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. We had three of those, myself, my brother, and my dad. We were flying them at, our, at my dad's place, and he's right by the interstate, okay? And this van rolls in, and he's just like, yeah, we've seen you guys out there flying. And he had this really funny story because it was, it was a guy, and he was, uh, he was uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, he, was, uh, he was in the 101st Airborne, and uh, on his first jump, the chute didn't open. Okay, I can't make this up. And so he's paralyzed from the waist down, paraplegic. And he said, I'm looking for a hobby that I can get into. I saw you guys from the road. That looked awesome. Can I pull my van up and watch you fly? And we said, sure, man, come on out. Let's do it. So we fired up a couple more batteries. We had three Spitfires up in like two minutes. Wow, wouldn't you know it? Uh, we had a midair. Uh, no, it was you and dad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, him and my dad. They were <laughs> wham, midair. Just oh no! Down from the heavens, it was crazy, and the guys are like, "Oh, geez!" So the one it it landed like right in front of them. So two of them crashed. I'm still alive. I'm pretty young at yeah. the time, probably 16 years when, old. When he was conservative with his flying. Yeah. So I was like, "I'm for <laughs> for a victory roll." Of course, I had just repaired that thing like two days earlier. I got popsicle sticks in my wings, so I come diving in. It's what three channel. Yeah, no, yeah. no rudder. So I come in, I just pull this monstrous victory roll, snap. <laughs> and so the wing snaps off, pew, thing crashed right in front of this guy. <laughs> I mean, just foam everywhere. This guy had a death look on his face. He's like, yeah, I don't think this is the kind of thing that's going to make me, you know, bide my time. <laughs> so we killed three of those in like two minutes. We you had, killed, you, there was, you, there was that's newest. hilarious. I was going to say, did he come back? After all that, no. <laughs> we weren't ambassadors back then, George, but we are now, <laughs> for sure. We're going to watch what we do from here on out. That's so funny. And it's, uh, hey, that's also the reality, too, you know what I mean? Um, I've had some, I've had some, this year's came out the gate crazy. Yeah. You've, been, you've been killing the foam left and right. <laughs> What you been doing? <laughs> well, we've heard through the airwaves. Ha, yeah, well, <laughs> there's a lot that could be going on with with some of this conversation that I, I'll keep out of respect for everybody out of the out of the mix. <laughs> Let's just say sometimes it's pilot error and sometimes it's not. <laughs> but if when, when in doubt take the blame or you're a chump. You know what I mean? If you don't know if it's your gear or not, take the, take the blame, man. 
So, so when I do say gear, I'm very confident it is. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you know, we may not even need to do questions because we'll just just keep on ripping. But so, what was what was the first plane you guys ever had? Like, what was the first plane you ever had, Joe? Well, uh, mine was a gift from uh, from you. Yeah, the Airbird Swift. Yeah. yeah. This was what, uh, five or uh, six? I, I started about 13 years ago. Um, the first plane I bought was a Park Zone Hawk, Hawk Wolf 190. I still have it hanging up here. There's probably 30% original parts still in it. <laughs> yeah. And so I started out with that. You know, everybody wants to start with a Warbird, right? Nobody wants to have a trainer and whatever. So uh, crashed it fixed it, crashed it, and then I decided to get a, uh, a trainer, if you will. I bought an Aerobird Challenger. Still hanging. And it's hanging up here, it's too, hanging, in the man. background. No kidding. So and that uh, Falk Wolf, is that, the, is that the one, is that the Defron one, like the Spitfires were, or was it a, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The whole works, and, and that's really what started it all. Uh, I, got, I got some flights into that Aerobird and uh moved back to the Falk wolf and uh i was living in wisconsin at the time and and dad came up to visit and i showed it to him he's an old gasser guy and uh him and actually my grandpa george they both were just couldn't believe that you could get a, a, an electric motor into something that size that would produce that amount of uh torque and everything and and so the, on the very next christmas i got I think I got my dad one of the Park Zone P51s. I got Joe a uh, Aerobird Swift, they called it. Mine had ailerons. With ailerons. And, yeah. and uh, we have a third brother, kind of like a, a Sith, you know. <laughs> uh, he, he flew, I bought him one too, and he flew it and killed it and crashed it. And, Just like, you know, me. yeah. So that's <laughs> started it. I, yeah, you, you were know, responsible. Yeah, well, I, I'll, take it, I'll take the blame. And, and we still have all those airframes. That's around. crazy. It's wow. A time to, you know, I, Joe and I have talked about even starting like a YouTube channel, you know, like, like the resurrection of uh, airplane resurrection for RC. You know, we'll bring out these old birds and either haggard yeah, airframes. Because I'm sure we have parts for them. We bought parts every time we get an airplane, we buy enough parts to build a new one. But yeah. Either get it on its own again with its own original equipment, or uh, or pop it up to you know modern stuff. But we'd have to do at least a plane a week to to you know to get through them, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. Um, well, you know we, who's got? Go ahead, Joe. Well, there's two thoughts. What what kick started me? I was like, I wasn't even driving cars yet, and he brings this model over, and I think I'm you know slick Willie. And I was just like, oh, this is great. I can keep this thing straight and level. And then I was like, won't you let me land it? You know, go ahead and let me land it. Just what was that? It was a uh, Park Zone Typhoon still hanging on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what jump started at all because yeah. it was like, he yeah. did that. Then two weeks later, I had a Park Zone Typhoon. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, we've been doing it since Horizon wasn't even the guy. You know, yeah. <laughs> they were just, they were just little kid on the block, you know, back in the day. Yeah. But, uh, the, yeah, well, because, because, because uh, the that other guys were still, point, he was talking about, you know, resurrecting planes. We were talking to George earlier and we had, uh, we had a great conversation about old planes and, you know, there's so many people out there on uh, tired iron EDF jet club. The, the new motion uh, fan fan page. There are so many people out there, smart people, smarter than us. And uh, we got all these old planes and we need to get minds together to where we can get new motors, new speed controllers, stick them in them and just pump life back into them and get them flying again. You know, you got a model that's four or five years old. And it's just, it's whipped, you know, it's just, it's not doing what it used to do. <laughs> yeah. And we don't. Dude, that that's you know that's always fun especially when you want to stretch the hobby like budget or dollars too and and just eke 
you know, more out of what you have is like, you know, paint them up, uh, modify them, hop them up. I think George was telling me, I think it was the E-Flight P-47, something. I can't remember. Maybe it was the Rare Bear, but he put like 6S system in it or something. And it's flying so fast that the foam beads are like shrapnel inside the battery compartment after each flight. Like the cowl is just like coming undone. I had that, the uh, f <laughs> there. I flew the paint off of it. Like, yeah. It was just, it was streaked out just because I flew it so much. And yes. It was a fire plane. It's got a thin coat of paint on it. <laughs> Dude, those things are so fun. The, the Strega killed me. I mean, they're all fast. And, yeah. and, when those were when we were doing the work on those we you know kind of had them all at the same time in a way the one year you had strega we had the other ones yeah and strega was probably taking the lead you know, just because of the oh come on <laughs> strega was ripping you had, us in the turns. Huh? you had us you had us in the turns uh, strega was strega was something else so, all right, cool. What was, let me ask you, what was the last one you flew? What was the last plane you flew, Brad? Uh, actually, probably the Timber. Um, Fitting. We were out <laughs> a, a week or so ago. Uh, Jonah was flying his newer, newer plane, and uh, I, for whatever reason, well, I brought the timber along for him to fly, and uh, Joe showed up with his. And yeah, next thing you know, I'm inverted. Joe's, you know, nice. and you we get that stuff. Like four, <laughs> Film. Like, to do, you know, trying to call out the turns and this and that and the other because he had a bum aileron servo, and he's sitting there doing all this crap. And I was like, just land it. We'll fix that servo. And he's like, no, I'm good. So I'm inverted. And he's sitting here doing this number. <laughs> Doing like this, and I was like, I can, I can hold level, but it was, it was fighting me every, yeah. every step of the way. <laughs> kind of like an impromptu practice for, because we don't really get a chance to practice much. F from what you've seen in the videos with the Tiger Cat, that was That's my it. second flight on the Tiger Cat, and my second flight on that 86. I mean, yeah, more time to actually get out, and because I would eventually like to get one of us inverted with the F-86 and the other, you know, just start doing stuff like that. But when, when, we got, when do we have time to get that worked out, you know, so. It, it's, it's tough, but I mean, you know, you, you, you got like the Partridge family, you got a thing going for you, you know, as far as proximity <laughs> and, and trust. Yeah, Partridge family, the 100% worst analogy, but I mean, family, that's, that's the part. So, yeah. so the timber, you know what, I, I rushed out and did that maiden on the E-Flight P-47 just so if somebody asked me what the last thing I flew, it wouldn't be the same thing that I've said for the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. Because last week they asked me, and it was the Cherokee from the time before. I hadn't flown for, it's, it's brutal. You know, when you got dudes like George flying every day, and you know it. And then it's like a week or two before I get a chance. It just makes me twitch. So <laughs> that's I, I rushed out and made sure I had something different to say today. What was the last one you flew then? The timber with the funny servo? I, I got two stories. One, uh, the reason I had a bum aileron servo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so I was just on vacation and we were up, we, we were on a we were on the water, we had a cottage, and I had it on floats, took it all the way up to Canada. I mean, these timbers been all over the place, man. Nice. And they're on floats, and I think it was my fifth time in a week, and I was just doing horrible, just horrible landing. You know, been 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 drinking a little, and my dad was giving me the raspberries. He said, you know, were you gonna land that thing right or what? It's like, oh, okay. I put in a fresh battery, and my battery tray, because I rode that thing ragged. It was wore out to where I was just sticking the battery in there and closing up the hatch. So I did. Yeah. Okay, and I hand launched it, and, and it was beautiful. I was climbing out, and the next thing I know, just dead stick. And I was like, "Huh, that's kind of weird." Next thing I know, I see a battery falling out you know, <laughs> from the plane and just splash. And it's like, "Well, geez, I might as well put this controller down because this thing's dead stick." She just <laughs> had a falling leaf thing and came down and speared the floats. 
but I mean, the airframe was fine. It was perfect. And we had spare floats. So she's, she's still airworthy. She's in my car. <laughs> nah, that's awesome. So, so you got a servo wet. So he was talking about the Sabres. Um, we flew the Sabres out at Muncie this year. That formation flight, that was like the second flight he'd ever flown on that. Uh, but the first one, I kid you not, because Mike was there, and he'll, he'll back this up. He was, uh, he was, he came running over. He's like, man, I didn't know you guys were going to fly formation. I want to get it on film. Brad wanted help with the maiden. He's like, I'm going to maiden this thing. Help me with the trims. I was like, sure, but I'm going to put a battery in mine. And as soon as you, as soon as you get it trimmed out, I'm coming up with you. So he takes off, no trim, nothing. I mean, it's free wing. There, I mean, what, what more you got to say? It's free wing. And yeah. like, I'm good. I was like, okay, I'll be up in 30 seconds. And I'm on his wing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we nice. formationed it on the maiden yeah. and i mean Canada. of of the because that's the other thing too is you know we got some jets hiding behind us but we didn't get into the jet scene until this year and the free wing f-86 is the perfect airplane to start off your jet you know ordeal i, and, I agree <laughs> and 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 i think it depends also where guys coming from like yeah. you guys have tremendous warbird experience you know i'd say and and so i mean look i love this conversation because north american aviation i mean the f-86 is so warbird it's not even funny i mean it's it looks like a warbird except they swept the wings back and they put an engine through the middle i mean b-25s p-51s t-6s everything north american did well they did the bronco too didn't they that OV-10 thing? I, I, I don't know. But I think you're right. It's a great first jet for dudes with Warbird experience because it's going to fly like familiar. Mm -hmm. Didn't you guys feel like right at home in that thing? Oh, and then yeah. there's no weird delta wing and wing root glove stuff to have to really figure out yet because, the, I mean, it's right through the middle. It's got wings, nothing weird. Uh, the behavior is very predictable, and it's it, you should have – especially you guys like felt right at home <laughs> with those things. I, I, I got to get another one of those. The, the big thing I'll say is when you make a transition from Warbird to jet, watch your timer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't overfly those by a second. Cause I mean, they'll eat it up. <laughs> the one thing that always hit me at the, it, it's when you go from Warbird to jet too, for me, I still had the mentality you, when in doubt, I throw the battery in the front. Default always to nose heavy. It works for me, but like on jets, I remember the the my first summer in jets was with that F eighty six as well, right? We did a bunch of films in Muncie. We and and the first, I did the maiden here in South Bend off of grass, but my first jet with retrax was that F eighty six, and um. So you guys know what it looks like inside. There's all kinds of room to put that battery way up front. And um, I think even in the video, I was back up against the ESC, you know, wood strap. But I think that's still too nose heavy with the old school 5,000 brick. I mean, they're different now. The Admiral batteries are a little lighter. They're longer, different shape. But the last time I had an F-86... I took that battery strap out and put the battery back all the way. So until you get some jet time, it takes a minute to train your head. Cause I remember running out of elevator. It's in the video. We put up two flights of that F-86 from Muncie. And on one of the flights, I, I landed a little too slow and in low rate and again, and kind of nose heavy. And I totally ran out of elevator and I bounced a sh I bounced it hard. This family friendly show, by the way. So, um, yeah, high rate, move the battery back. You know what I saw? Uh, this is what happens when I drink coffee at nine o'clock is there's no periods in my sentences. They just keep going, run, 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 run. But I saw a landing. It was, uh, behind, it was kind of a behind the scenes thing. I actually think it was Alpha's buddy Victor in California, who's like ace mig killer on RC groups. Good pilot helps out when i couldn't do stuff in the winter time like victor and tony you know x-plane guy tony accurso when alpha was still in the states more they would help him do stuff in california anyway i saw a video of the f-86 that never really made it to public consumption 
but I think it was Victor flying and he landed that F-86 and had the best wheelie I've ever seen in my life. And, wow. and uh, those things, I just love it. Just like uh, there, there's uh, another YouTube channel where they fly in Florida like early mornings. I think it's like Buddy something. A anyway, they're all the time like getting wheelies and stuff. And people will pick on me for saying wheelies instead of aero brake, and it's like whatever. But I think wheelies are cool. When I rode a bicycle and I did wheelies, I called them wheelies, not yeah. aero braking. But uh, so yeah, finally learned to you know kind of move that back a little bit and get that wheel. Just like the landings on the P40, I, I always shoot for that because it, it just was felt so good, you know. Um, so so I try to design every other like prop single engine you know plane to kind of settle in like that and you get a couple good landings on a jet and you're like okay that's what I kind of want um yeah love the f86 you guys are gonna love that f4 and man that full flying stab that's one thing too when you're getting into jets that sneaks up on you because all of a sudden you can slam on the brakes if you're not paying attention with all that pitch you can slam on the brakes and and all of a sudden you're out of the speed and and because there's no cheater on this bad boy man coordinate them turns keep the speed up keep it as flat as you can because uh i know what happens when you don't <laughs> i've had a couple f4s at this point yeah yeah so speaking of innuendo what was the last plane you fixed fixing stuff non-stop yeah well for me it was uh we were at a uh, get together actually it was out at nephi jonah won a uh, tough jet they call it and uh it's I've got it here. It's basically a, a piece of corrugated plastic and uh, a motor. This guy. And, oh, wow. Uh, so I bought, he, he just won the airframe and I bought the motor and everything. And we built that over that week that I was off from work. And uh, the thing I didn't realize was they recommend five eighths. That's the recommended up for the neutral. Wow there yeah and so i had it set up with just a just a little bit you know just a little bit to help it climb out and trim it out and it would fly like it awesome used to and just bam yeah and, oh uh, man and you know, I, I was i was ready you know we were prepared to just anything that we brought we were going to fly and if it didn't fly right we'd throw it in the back of the truck and move on to something else of course Everybody at the club that was there, they're like, oh, we got some glue and tape. I had like three types of different tape thrown at me and all this different glue. So we we taped it back up and I gave it another eighth of an inch and it didn't hit as hard the second time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of that's a lot of up trim. You know, you're you, check out the build video. I know the guy who did the build video on the F4. I think it's pretty good. Um, but it calls for eight. That's me. It calls for eight millimeters of up trim. So do it for real. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. And and the mix, uh, flap to elevator mix in the book. Depending on where you like your packs, I like mine nose heavy, especially early. But I kind of slide it back af after I get comfortable. But um, I'm a little bit more up elevator than the book calls for. But that that's just me. All right, cool, man. Dude, time flies. It's crazy. What was the last one you fixed, Joe? Man, I haven't fixed one in a minute. I can tell you about five that need to be fixed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what are you going to – which out of those five would you be wanting to fix first? I'll take two pieces of tape, but I got an E-Flight T28 that I've had since, I don't know, before I made love to a woman. and uh, the micro? No, 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 the big dog. Okay. And, a horizontal stab i'm flying and i was like man my pitch is not so good it just ripped off like half of my elevator gone but i still have one in stock so all i gotta do is slide it in and put two pieces of tape so i mean i can nice. do that 
so be it. So is that, are you talking the OG Trojan, the fixed gear yeah. one? Okay, so it's like the Depron tail. Yeah. Yeah. Just, oh. <laughs> you, you know, you remember at Nephi every year, I think it's Pete Foss. He brings a bunch of cool stuff. I yeah. think he still brings – if it's not him, it's this other guy. I think his name is Brian. You know what's so great about Nephi, Nephi, whatever, is, is you, the same – the same guys, man. I mean, it's it's family there, and I love Muncie because it's my hometown. So, but yeah, uh, there's one guy every year since I think I've been to either the first every nephew but the last one, and I think I started going on. It's probably first year, maybe second year. I met you guys, I think, before motion for me actually. Close. I think you had just started something like that. So then Nephi's really turned into the Motion RC gathering. I mean, that's you know really how that happened. Family. That was that was a that's quite a story. It uh, actually actually Skywolf Anthony was gonna go and started kind of chatting it up and wasn't able to. He it, something always comes up, and then Dan Grossman, yeah, right. He yeah. was doing a road trip. This was. When was the first time those guys went? Like, you guys have been going, but Charlie and Dan and the Squawkers, maybe three years ago three years was ago. the first one. Um, that's so fun. So Dan was doing a road trip, wanting to come by the South Bend and hang out with me and Mike. And I was like, uh, but also wanted to check out AMA headquarters, right, Muncie. And I was like, um, when are you coming? when are you going to be in the area? And he gave me the dates. It was like June 12th through 14th or something. I was like, man, let me, let me call Jay Smith at AMA and see when Nephi's going to be. Cause I can't find anything online right now. And, and it was the same weekend. So yeah. So I was like, dude, I, it's better for me to meet you in Muncie than try to entertain you here because honestly we just work all the time and um, we'll only be able to go fly for a minute. So like, let's just d go to AMA um, meet there. And so kind of Dan at that point took the ball and ran with it and, you know, really chatted it up hard on hobby squawk forums. And then, um, you know, I've always worked behind the scenes to try to get some prizes and stuff to raise money for those charities and everything. And motion's always been super, uh, generous with that. So I feel like Nephi really has turned into, uh, a very motion centric event, which is super fun. I, I so wish I could have been there last time. And, um, you know, at AMA, it's very busy in the summer. There are so many different kinds of RC skills or facets that some of us, I, I kind of consider what we do the re re partly recreational part of it, where there's so much competition in extreme flight and then, and then other recreational skill sets like uh, – I don't even know what some of this stuff is, right? Where they just, like, run the motor up, they go for time, and they just – they don't even – they just finesse the steering into the structure. I don't think there's anything but a timer on some of this stuff, and then it drops like the elevator, you know. So there's so much going on at AMA. What I'm getting at is I don't think maybe until lately – they put a lot into Nephi. It was just like a, a thing because electrics have just come on, you know, and, and I think they might have not been so on board with it till lately because it's one of those things you guys, I don't know if you remember, gassers at the beginning of electrics were like not a fan. And, I, and for good reason, a lot of it was complete garbage. Like the first planes I had were complete garbage. <laughs> so I see why there was this bad, you know, rap for kind of early electrics. Uh, but so anyway, good job. AMA's doing it now. So last one you fixed or wanted to fix is what? Did I get an answer out of you? Last one you fixed. The last one I fixed was the Piper Cherokee today because I, um, the shaft got bent on the motor when I tried to put four cell on it the other day. And the, the, co the shaft adapter deal slid off almost all the way but not all the way so then on 4s it ran like crazy out of balance for just a minute and actually it's a funny story on one of the other shows where um the prop didn't fall off 
but it vibrated so hard the nose gear did and um i but the plane is such a doll that i was able to turn around and just like land on two and didn't hurt the plane at all which is cool i i fixed it today and like five minutes for real at work and then boogied out to the actual I boogied home, grabbed the Thunderbolt, almost forgot my adapter to go from like Dean's batteries to EC3 to fly that stuff. And actually when I got to the field, I lost it in the grass. I was so mad. I was like, I never get time to fly. I'm out here with two E flight planes. I can't fly them without yeah. this adapter. I'm looking at charge leads. I'm getting ready to like take wire nuts off of the, the gazebo like undo electric and like cut wire and do something like I'm going to fly for goodness sake. So anyway, I found the thing in the grass finally. So that was the last one I fixed was the e-flight Cherokee, but really nothing major. The last major plane I fixed was probably, probably an F4. And when I wrecked my Bayhawk the other day, um, I just I wrote that one off. Yeah. Me and Mike were flying together in formation. I flew, we flew into each other. He lost a flap and a chunk of wing. We both landed just fine. He went. Uh, this reminds me of your timber story with the bad servo. He went up again after that flight. He went up again without a flap and a chunk of wing missing, which is just kind of fun on a jet. Like Mike, Mike you're crazy, huh? Hey, that's because that's because Mike's a player. Yeah, he is balling for sure. And then mine boy. was okay, but I, like I said, I got all screwed up and put it into the corn like so hard. Guys, it's like been an hour. Like what in the world? So best way to keep up with the exploits of the Timber Brothers is you guys should have a page. You guys should do a Facebook page or group, mm -hmm. and then you both be the admins of it, you know? That's good. Tired thing. Iron North or whatever. Yeah. Um, that way you can document the fun you're having over here. Man, look at the guys who are watching. I don't know if you can see like all these micros in the back. And I mean, really, I feel like I'm at George's place now and there's like an old antique cool like boat motor over here. Like <laughs> he, tried to, he wanted to cover that up. <laughs> no, nah, man. Dude, <laughs> cool. <laughs> what, what brand is that? Johnson. Motor. That's a yeah. Johnson, dude. We got we got to show you this Fock Wolf real quick. Show me the Fock Wolf. We got to show you the Fock Wolf here. How's this thing work? So we got some we got some goodies. We got got a little bit of this, a little bit of that. What's that? This is Brad's first plane. Wow, man. Oh, I remember thing. those. I remember those hanging up in the window at hobby shops when I got into planes. And, and I thought they were ridiculously expensive, and I never was gonna pay for them. It's the spit. Dude, I remember these. These were the first park zone planes that caught my attention. And then I found GWS. Look at that. I remember that one. Ferocious this Frankie. One, this is the one he was talking about. You want to do a good trainer. Oh, yeah. That's a lot like what I uh, trained on. The, the easy, what was it? The Wing Dragon from like Arc Tech. It was a lot like that. It had that plastic um, fuselage and then cool. Well, guys, man, time goes so fast. I, I'd like to thank Tired Iron for uh, hosting this, letting us come over to his Facebook. Uh, you guys on Facebook, we'll get it figured out a little bit better. Hey, we'll get it figured out a little bit better where we can see comments and stuff. Me and Mike did a Saturday Night Live uh, RC Pilots Lounge on our YouTube channel last weekend, and that was on fire. Uh, so, guys who are blowing up the comments, I'm going to check them out as soon as this show is over. Um, Joe and Brad are going to drop their handles in there and comment so you guys can follow them. And uh, then you'll know if and when they uh, get a YouTube channel together or get a Facebook page going because I think you probably should document yes. your exploits. you got a lot going on, and you've got the right idea with the connecting with the community and the camaraderie, you know, Tired Iron North. I like it. The Ream brothers, we got to have you back because there's, we really have barely touched the surface. Like when we're at Nephi, like we <laughs> go till the wee hours of the morning talking about this stuff, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this reminds me of Joe Dirt. Like, like we got to have you back gotta here. We got to keep telling the story, the saga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, 
well, hey, look, I'm doing this thing weekly, so, I mean, there will be more time for that. And, um, you know, there's definitely going to be some new releases coming around soon all over the place. We, uh, you know, I love it. I just started a different Facebook profile so I can actually jump in all these groups now because uh, it's funny. Like, I do all the social media stuff, but I have absolutely done nothing on a Ryan Ramsey uh, Facebook profile um, until recently because my <laughs> wife didn't want the kids all over the world. So, so I've got one dedicated to RC now. So you guys can see me jumping in groups and being able to participate because uh, I wasn't really able to do that before because folks would want to request you and then you feel bad when you don't, when you say no. So, uh, man, George, thanks again. Here we are. We're, we're getting ready to turn into a pumpkin. It's been an hour. You guys have any last uh, thoughts or words or anything you want to say? Um, are you heading out to the uh, Indiana Warbird campaign this weekend out at, out at Muncie? Probably not. Okay. I'm going to be on the road to Toledo to pick up my oldest okay. for the holiday weekend. Right on. Yeah. Then, yeah. Uh, my next week. event is going to be probably the, the Joe Nall in the fall show. Um, okay. and, and I'm actually still waiting on some of that. And then I've already got reservations for Texas. What's that? Is Motion going to have a presence at Null in the fall? There's, that's still being determined. I, I would kind of assume so to at least a degree. It's just how big uh, a presence. I'm not. I, I, I'm waiting to hear if I'm going. Actually, so. Uh, but I am going for sure to uh, Grapevine, Texas. We did it last year. Uh, raise money for. Um, it's called Snowball Express, where they raise money for uh, children of fallen soldiers to um, have experiences and get together with other families who have gone through the same thing, which is, it's, an, it's actually a really neat thing. And we love the hospitality in Texas. They treat Captain Mike and Pilot Ryan right. So <laughs> I, I, look as, I look forward to the flying as much as the food. I don't miss meals, you know what I mean? So uh, good time there. So that's, that's the next thing on the docket for us. And then, of course, next week, Thursday, 9 o'clock Eastern, we're going to have, uh, you know, guests again on the RC Pilots Lounge. Thanks for doing this with me this time. We'll do this again. Uh, yeah, tag me and everything. I wanna see what's happening uh, as you guys like kind of document this, uh, this thing you're putting together. Super Great. cool. Yeah, it, it's always hard to say goodbye, right? But it's, it's time to. Guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if, you, if you, go ahead, Joe. Thank you for having us. And no sweat, a pleasure and I'm, I really missed you guys this year at Neffy. I, I wish I could have gone. You better make – you know what? Didn't you guys miss a year? Yeah. I swear you missed a year one time, and I was so bummed. I <laughs> What's that? I said so did you. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. Well, next year there's no excuse. What's that, Brad? We went out there for Labor Day weekend – or Memorial Day weekend, like two weeks before. We were like, oh, yeah, we can make it to Neffy. And we flew so much. We were so tired. Like, ah. Yeah, uh, we'll skip Nephi this year. Was it the flying that wore you out, or was it the yingling? Uh, it was the sun. The sun, yeah. that's our excuse. Good answer. <laughs> Everybody, thanks so much for coming over. We're having a blast. Um, check this thing out on Facebook, and then uh, probably in a day or two, it's on the YouTube channel, and we always post this up to Anchor, the podcast app. For those of you who don't want to um, check out our ugly mugs and just want to listen, while you're taking care of that honey-do list, we got you covered no matter how you want to consume this stuff. So, again, thanks for watching. We're out here, George. I haven't heard anything from George, but we're going to go in fist bump. Five, four, three, two, salute.